<laughs> the, the idea of, of workers not knowing what they're walking into. Let me say, I used to work in a lot of concert halls, and one, I knew it was smoking when I walked in. I also knew it was loud when it walked in, but I don't see the loud police coming in saying, we've got to protect the workers in bars from being loud. No worker goes to a restaurant and bar unaware that they're going to be working in a, in a smoky environment. You know, I, I got a, amongst the younger voters in Fort Collins, I got the most traction when I'd stand up in forums and say, the government shouldn't be paying to tell you something. You should, the government shouldn't be spending money to tell you something that your mother should have told you. You know, don't go out, literally, don't run outside in a thunderstorm. Wear, cold, wear uh, warm clothes in cold weather. All of these things are sort of built into, if you go through the city of Fort Collins, and every city has this sort of stuff, where you have a pamphlet here and a website there that tells you how to be a better person. There is this attitude that if the government isn't telling you how to be a better person, you're not going to figure it out on your own. Turn out the lights when you leave a room. You know, when you should be mowing your lawn in order to uh, you know, minimize the amount of ozone you're throwing up, or whatever it is. I guarantee you my mother never taught me that one. <laughs> that's, that's a good point. We, we have don't huff. Uh, the fumes from mothballs. The city of Fort Collins is spending money somewhere on a website or a pamphlet. That's what that I've says, been doing wrong. I, I, <laughs> so that's the type of idiocy. We, we have a wood smoke hotline in the city of Fort Collins. Okay? You should check to see if Boulder has one. I bet they do. A wood smoke hotline. Wood smoke hotline. Is this so when you're barbecuing, they tell you what type of hickory to use? No, it's even better. When your neighbor is barbecuing, you can call and complain uh, about the smoke wafting over. If you have a wood, they don't build they don't put uh, wood stoves in new home construction, but there are a lot of older homes that have wood stoves. I have a wood stove. And if your smoke doesn't, isn't reduced to only 20% opacity within 15 minutes of you starting the fire, your neighbor can call the city of Fort Collins, call their wood smoke hotline, and the city of Fort Collins will send a letter to the entire neighborhood explaining what the wood smoke ordinance is and how can we help get past this project this problem so let's talk about the 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 hook that every nanny uses every command and control junkie uses which is all right personal freedom is fine but it's going to be the social cost the externality that you know, smoking's fine if you want to destroy it. but the problem is when you smoke you're going to uh, go on the government dole we're gonna to have to pay for you You might not want to wear a seatbelt but when you crash we're gonna to have to take care of you you might uh, want to eat that trans fat but when you get so large that you need medical care we're gonna to have to pay for you now that we're paying for you we have the right in fact it's a social good we must be able to try to minimize these costs it's a fiscal issue and this is you know when, when I see a nanny who really just in their heart wants to control people's lives this there's glee that they <laughs> that they have the ability to, to use this argument tell, tell me what's is, is tell me about the truth of that argument first well I mean if you think about sort of the logic of that argument what they're basically saying is that uh, take alcohol for example excise taxes right we need to tax alcohol because alcohol causes you know people to, to beat their wives and and go out and, and drive drunk and uh, you know people become alcoholics and it's this huge cost on society well when you impose an excise tax that doesn't affect the drunks right the alcoholics are still gonna drink uh, it doesn't it doesn't uh, uh, doesn't have any effect on their behavior at all it's the moderate and the social drinkers that end up cutting back a little bit so what what these the, the externality argument particularly when it comes to excise taxes it ends up being a subsidy for bad behavior the people who who uh, take things in moderation and consume these products responsibly end up paying for the people who take them irresponsibly. So you're subsidizing the people that bad, make bad decisions and that's just bad policy I think. Also, I mean, you, on one hand, they want to socialize things more, make everything collective, and then they and then they talk about externalities. You know, I mean, the the, the obvious answer to to that sort of thing is to make the individual responsible for his own behavior. But instead, we're in his own health care costs. In his own health care. <laughs> so that's why I think when we do have some sort of nationalized let's, let's, healthcare, let's, let's be honest. Yeah. We're not, uh, we don't have a society that we're going to let somebody die of lung cancer because they, they don't have health insurance. You know, a guy comes rolling in and he doesn't have insurance on his car, but he's got a, uh, uh, he's, he's in terrible shape because he didn't wear a seatbelt. We're going to say, I'm sorry, you, you are stupid. We're not going to, we, the reality is we're going to give them care. So isn't it, isn't it logical, isn't it? that we force them to stop smoking, we force them to wear a seatbelt, and we, we stop force Stop skiing them. as well, right? I mean, everyone in Colorado skis except me, so I don't, I, why am I paying for them to break their legs and hurt their well, arms? I mean, we there's could a go difference, forever with it. There's that. a difference there, though, because skiing is sort of an immediate trauma, and, and not wearing a seatbelt could be an immediate trauma. When you're talking about the nanny state controlling what, whether you smoke, what you eat, what you drink, 
the, the, the arguments they use are long-term chronic health problems. These mm -hmm. are things, lung cancer doesn't happen to you like a car crash, it happens over 40 years maybe. Trans fat isn't going to give you arterial sclerosis immediately, it's gonna happen over 40 years. And the irony here, is that what they're they're saying is that oh you're costing the healthcare system too much especially when it's a collective healthcare system but the irony is of course if you get lung cancer you're going to die sooner than you would have otherwise yeah. if you have a heart attack because you ate too many donuts you're going to die sooner than you would have otherwise and it's those people who will actually cost the healthcare system less money there was a because they're not around to drain the system preventative well. care is a myth basically a complete I mean, that, myth. It, that, it, that it saves us money there yeah. was a danish study that just confirmed yeah. came out a couple weeks ago that confirmed that uh, obese people morbidly obese people do die sooner than uh, people of, of average weight, uh, but you, they, you're they, talking to me. <laughs> but they <laughs> they end up saving uh, saving the system money because they don't have those extra years right. living where they need health care. Yeah, and so, but, so but, if the state really let's wants let's to save money, they ought to be force feeding us. This. I, 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 I want to go after this one more time because this is the argument that I think a lot of nannyists don't get when they say we're saving you money because we're keeping these people alive. The end of life costs are basically the same. Now, if you're not, if you get yeah. lung cancer now, or if you get pancreatic cancer later, the the costs are still the same. In fact, if you're sick later because of escalating healthcare costs, it's going to cost more. Is, you is mean this we're all going to die of something? You, <laughs> you people are going to die of something. <laughs> There's a, a stand-up comedian. I can't I can't think of his name off the top of my head, but he had a great. Uh, I remember seeing a, a, an act. He had a great line about this. He said, "You know, they tell me if I quit smoking, it'll add five years to my life." He said, "But." It's five years to the end of my life. You know, if, if I had five more years in my 30s, I might think about it. But you know, I don't. Who wants another five years in the nursing home? You know, I'd rather have a cigarette. So. Right, have those, a cigarette. those are those last weeks are the ones we hit, spend hooked up to tubes anyway. I, I'll pass on those things. But, but but I, I want to hammer this home because this is this is an issue that the tobacco industry knows, but they are never going to advertise. It's mm -hmm. something that the alcohol industry knows. Everybody knows this. That fine. If you really indulge in our product, yeah, you're going to die sooner. But your health care cost to society, your social security costs, your Medicaid costs, your Medicare costs will be less. Therefore, here, have a cigarette. It, it, yeah, it's, not a, it's not a popular argument to make <laughs> that uh, our products kill people. Therefore, you're wrong about the, the health care right. argument. Uh, but, it, you know, it's true. And, it, I mean, it ends up following uh, people like us, policy people, to make that argument uh, for them, I guess. To which no one listens anyway. Yeah. But, but the other part of it is we, we are now taxing so much on the sins that we're making an addiction to these taxes. Here in Colorado, cigarette taxes go to things not of helping people with lung cancer as much as the Read to Achieve program to help little That's kids right. learn how to read. So I light up at school, at school grounds and playgrounds to, to let the kids know I care. <laughs> <laughs> but as less and less people smoke, fewer and fewer people smoke, that money goes away. That's right. I mean, you quit smoking, you're taking money out of the hands of the children. So keep smoking for the children, right? Uh, no, and, and the, the municipalities are and the states are getting addicted to the money that comes from addiction. And we've seen it with, I mean, we saw it last summer when people drove less and the gas tax revenues decreased. And when you have smoking bans and they go into effect on, uh, you know, these, these towns and states now in Colorado, um, smoking decreases and there's less revenue in the coffers for anti-smoking programs and things that they're, they're, they've tapped into those uh, revenues for, like the children. So. I'm not worried, though. I think they'll find new revenue. That's true. So <laughs> once, once that well, uh, a good example is, is gambling. Uh, where in my home, or I live in Virginia, and a few years ago, uh, there was just this interesting convergence of stories. On, on one hand, this guy was optometrist was killed during a SWAT raid because an undercover detective overheard him betting on football games at a bar with his friends and they decided he was an illegal gambler and they had to come and get him and they accidentally shot him. Same time. Uh, did, so, did, did he beat the spread? <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so, you know, they're going to send this in to protect us from you know, gambling, you know, protect us from ourselves here. But at the same time, you know, that year the Virginia State Lottery spent $35 million of, of taxpayers' money promoting the state gambling. lottery, getting people. And of course, you know. His gambling is bad. Our gambling, our gambling is good. 